Pie Launcher is the simplest and most intuitive launcher out there. It wipes everything from your home screen, and when you press and hold, a ring will appear around your finger with a ton of your most frequently used apps. From there, you can swipe in the direction of the app you want to open. Pretty cool. To bring up the rest of your apps, simply tap on the home screen. It's definitely not going to win awards, but it's a great option to clear any distractions whenever you unlock your phone. Oxshell is another interesting launcher that thinks outside the box. It's surprisingly even made with gamers in mind. I mean, you can literally navigate it with a controller. Pretty cool. It even resembles a classic PlayStation menu with a horizontal line of folders and a nostalgic blue live wallpaper with moving waves. Scrolling from one category to the next will open a cascade of apps, and you can even create your own folders to include your favorite sets. Hell, it's even got a built-in file manager to let you view and edit your user data. The only thing I will say is that when you start to use the launcher with your finger, it definitely feels a lot more laggy than if you were using a controller. So hopefully the developer can improve the performance for Oxshell in the future. Still, it's something cool to show off to any of your iPhone buddies, and it's completely free, so it's still worth a shot. You also need to give these wallpapers and widgets a shot. My team has been working hard creating new artwork every week, and using these will spice up these 10 underrated launchers I'm about to show off, only on my Patreon. By the way, these launchers are relatively new, have less than 100,000 downloads, and are actively being updated by the developers. A bunch of them aren't even on the Play Store. And I'd be sure to stick around to the end where I show off a unique way to hack and modify the current Pixel Launcher if that's your preferred choice. O Launcher is also a preferred choice by many. It keeps things clean and minimal with just text as a vertical list for all of your apps, but it's pretty stale and lacks a few features. So a better version is called O Launcher Clutter Free. It has the same exact look and concept because it's a forked version, but it includes extra features that the original version doesn't have. For example, you can change the text alignment within the app drawer, modify what gets opened when tapping on the clock or date, add 15 apps on the home screen instead of just eight, get more options to choose from when enabling the gestures, and even select a different language altogether if English isn't your first choice. A great alternative overall. If you'd still prefer another launcher that's just as minimal and clean, Lunar Launcher is a great option as well, and it only got released three months ago. You get three screens, a centered homepage that includes a battery ring with the time and date in the center, and a task management feature right below. From there, you can swipe up to bring a control center with volume controls, brightness, and access to your favorite contacts or websites. Then swiping to the right has all of your apps in a list format. It even shows you how many apps you have installed with a big number in the background. And then to the left most screen, you can see your system stats in real time, like the RAM, CPU, storage capacity, etc. Something that I've never seen before in a launcher. You can even add widgets right below that. And there's even an RSS feed, which only works with a few websites though. Still, it has some fantastic ideas, and even though there's a ton of room for improvement, it's only been out for three months, so I'm curious to see how well this launcher improves in the future. Now, while it's pretty awesome to change the look of our home screens or fill our homes with smart tech, our backyards have been left behind. And that's usually when tech can become the handiest because it can save you hours of labor-intensive work, especially if you have a pool. That's why I partnered up with Aper because they make some of the best cordless robotic pool cleaners on the market. I mean, I was able to try out their Seagull Pro on my friend's filthy pool. And let me tell you, it cleaned it so well that we felt like we were on vacation. It could even clean the pool's floors, walls, and water line in just a few hours. Its powerful quad motor system was able to suck up all the dirt into its filter basket, leaving a spotless path wherever it went. Plus the fact that it could clean the pool's walls instantly sold me. It was just jaw dropping to see how well it climbed the walls. The Seagull Pro also provided an efficient cleaning path that covered the entire pool space in just a few hours, thanks to its industry leading wave path navigation technology. But the best part about all this is just how easy it was to set up. All I had to do was pull it out of the box, charge it, wait till it's full, then unplug it and take it outside. Set it to auto mode to clean both the floor and walls, and then just dunk it into the pool to have it start scrubbing away. Once it was done cleaning, using Aper's retrieval hook, I pulled it out of the pool, discarded any dirty remnants inside of its filter basket, hosed it down, and put it back in. It's that easy. 
So if you're tired of breaking your back every time you clean your pool, it's time to let Aper's robotic pool cleaners do all the work for you. Check out their link at the top of the description and give your backyard the smart tech upgrade it deserves. This next launcher isn't really a launcher. It's more like a panel that lets you access your favorite apps and specific system controls, but it still has the word launcher in it, so I included it anyways. They call it Edge Card Launcher, and simply swiping down on the edge of the screen will bring up this mini menu. From there, you can open any of your favorite apps, contacts, control the volume, toggle the flashlight, change the music, etc. Plus, it really comes in handy when using your phone with one hand. Not a bad option to use as a secondary launcher. Quizetso is a launcher that's already been reviewed on the channel, which you probably already knew if you were subscribed. It doesn't follow the typical AOSP launcher recipe. Instead, it's been made from scratch, following its own rules. It focuses most of its attention on the search, which is a pretty good choice since you can quickly get to what you need right away. To access it, you simply swipe down and it comes up along with your app drawer. It's also very powerful, letting you search just about anything from your favorite apps, to your files, to your calendar events, to even Wikipedia pages. I even love that I can create custom tags to quickly access certain lumps of apps, like all the wallpaper apps on my phone. Back on the home page, I can also swipe up to access an entire widget page, which already comes with a few of its own, including a weather, music player, and calendar widget. You can even add some of your own. It's a very organized launcher that lets you get to anything very quickly. Focus Launcher is another minimal option to let you be more productive and stop any distractions. There's no wallpaper, widgets, or any crazy bells and whistles, just a clock at the top, a lunar tracker, and a collection of your favorite apps listed down below in a Neo-like theme. Swiping to the right will bring in the app drawer and a search bar. And then all the way to the left is the launcher settings. You can take things a step further by hiding away the status bar and any useless apps. Obviously, this is not the most exciting launcher out there, but it could just be a temporary way to help you use your phone less if you're too addicted. Stereo Launcher is by far my favorite option from this entire list. It's well thought out, really stable, and thinks outside the box while still keeping things familiar. The homepage carries your essentials like the time, battery, date, favorite apps, Google search bar, etc. And whenever you listen to music, the music player pops up. A really nice touch. To access even more content, you can start swiping around. Swiping down will bring up all your favorite widgets. Swiping up will bring in the app drawer. Swiping to the right pulls up the built-in notepad for all of your on-the-spot ideas. And then to the left, you can get a briefing panel which lets you keep track of all your favorite websites and YouTube channels. You just need to add them with the RSS link. Way better than the Google Discover panel. The only downside about Stereo is that it's not as feature-packed or customizable as other popular launchers, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Neo Launcher is the only one on this list that looks just like the Pixel Launcher, which can seem pretty dull, but it still has a few tricks up its sleeves to make it stand out from the competition. For example, whenever you double tap the home screen, you get a control center called Dash, and this lets you toggle system settings or control the music player. They have an at-a-glance widget that's on steroids, letting you add a clock, have dynamic alerts, obtain music info and more, you can also choose from different feed panels to be dropped on the leftmost screen. You can have the Google Discover panel or a Neo feed panel, which is a custom RSS feed. Plus it supports blank pages, which is a perfect option for those who like using KLWP templates. The only thing I will say is that the design of the UI, especially in the settings, needs a bit of improvement. Finally, if you're actually using the Pixel Launcher and can't find yourself switching to anything else, Pixel Launcher mods can definitely improve your experience. It can finally let you change the icon pack, replace the at a glance widget, or replace the search bar with another widget. And the fun doesn't stop there. You can also hide the apps in the app drawer, resize the widgets to any size, hide the clock in the status bar, and a lot more. The only string attached is that it does require root to run. Still, I think that's a justifiable reason to root. Either way, click this video right here to learn about more customizable applications. I'll be linking the Pixel 7 Pro, which is the phone I used in this video within the YouTube product tags feature, sponsored by YouTube themselves. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!